What's going on today, Omni Buddies? Mitch here, and today I want to talk about something a little bit different with our collecting hobby with uh, hardcovers, Omnis, library editions, all of those. One thing, at least, that I've noticed about collectors in this hobby is that we love the physical aesthetics of the book. Not only is it a great Normally a great reading experience. Some people complain about books getting a little bit too thick, too hefty, looking at you, Big Dem, Sin City. Um, but one thing about the aesthetics that we love is dust jackets. And one thing that we hate about aesthetics is how some of the publishers print these dust jackets. They mismatch, looking at you uh, change over in Marvel with your tiny little text on the spines and new stripes on the bottom. They look good, but they don't match. They switched it halfway through the volume run, which is just crazy. And sometimes you get your book in and it says volume one on volume one and it doesn't say anything on volume two. It doesn't say volume two or even anything like that. Or the logos are, are mismatched with DC changing their logos every five minutes it seems like. So halfway through a uh, collected edition print run, all of a sudden the logo starts changing. Uh, looking at Sandman and how it changes from like Vertigo to DC Vertigo to DC. So they're all over the place. and. Part of this hobby and this community, we have some amazing, amazing designers in our groups and in these hobbies. They're all over Instagram. You can look them up and see all their work. You can commission them to make you new dust jackets and they are beautiful and they are amazing. You can see them all over the place and just contact them, commission them to make a new one. You can get them printed. Uh, depending where you're at, uh, different uh, small print stores, some of the bigger ones will print them. I'm not going to go too much into that because uh, you're dealing with, some of them think it's a copyright issue because you're trying to resell, but you're not. It's just for your own personal collection. So there's all kinds of craziness with it. But what's really awesome is that we can get these new dust jackets. And I love doing fun new dust jackets. I think I have 30, maybe up to 40 uh, different custom dust jackets on my uh, in my library. I have one through five of Captain America by Brubaker. Uh, I loved the DM variant on volume one and I didn't have the DM variant so uh, I got the number volume one commissioned and then I commissioned four, uh, two through five to match that white spine because it is so beautiful. I got a custom on my uh, Grant Morrison volume one dust jackets because I really wanted that purplish pink with yellow. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, my Green Lanterns and Blackest Night and Brightest Day, Flash. So many great customs are out there. But because I show mine off quite a bit and talk about them quite a bit online, people are always asking me, great, I got this thing commissioned, I got it printed, it's in my house, how do I put this thing on my hardcover? How do I make it fit? How do I fold it? All those things. So since I've done so many of them, uh, I did a little video tutorial, but it was only on Facebook and the video quality was terrible. So I'm gonna do one now. So let's dig right into how to fold a custom dust jacket for your collected edition. All right, here we are in my uh, kitchen at my island because we have a lot of workspace. And um, first thing I did before I started this is I cleaned this table. Uh, one, I have three kids, so it's always a mess. This is the cleanest it has been in a while because their kids and they're messy and they eat breakfast here. So there's cereal and milk everywhere all the time, like oatmeal. But so we cleaned it nice so that we're not getting anything dirty, uh, anything rubbing or anything like that on these dust jackets. Um, I printed these at, uh, with a printer I had access to, but it only did matte printing. It did not do gloss. So that's why this is a uh, not shiny, not reflective. It's nice thick paper, like a re regular dust jacket. But again, it's not that uh, nice shiny paper, but that's okay. That's cool. 
Um, I actually like the mat on a lot of these and I printed this a while ago. I have not gotten around to putting it on. I have one through six and uh, the seventh, which is Hellboy and Hell for my Hellboy library edition. So um, I figured I would give it a try with this. So this is the dust jacket. I, most printers will cut it for you. I had to trim these myself. Um, generally when you get your file, you just print it to 100% because uh, it's made to scale. So we are first going to, well, one, one part about this is one side is really easy because you can see where the fold line is gonna be over here because there is you know, a break in the art. On this side over here, there isn't really a break in the art. So it's difficult to see. Uh, you kind of have a little bit here with like the Dark Horse logo at the bottom. So you can kind of see where the fold, fold, not a full fold, we'll get into that lines will be. Um, so you kind of got to do some measuring. Um, so it's kind of measuring twice, fold, or um, lightly fold once. That's kind of the dust jacket rule. So remember, um, we're going to put this straight down. Um, we are going to kind of make sure that the size aligns. Yep, height, height width. So we're good with that. So what I generally do then is I, here I'll turn it so you can see the book. So go like this. I will fold it around, get the spine lined up on here. I'm gonna have to lean around. You can see that there's art cut right there. So you can kind of see where the side is gonna be on the back. Um, so I'm gonna get that lined up pretty well with the logo get it lined up because I'd rather have the low, the spine looking nice because that's what you're seeing the whole time. Have the spine looking the best. Um, have it lined up around pretty even with that. Having it set pretty straight on the, on the uh, table. Then I'll kind of give it just a light fold down just so I can kind of see it when I take it off and it's not over committing either. So let's see that. So yeah, cause you never want to fully just crease it. Cause if you look at all your other dust jackets, they're not perfectly, you know, a real fine crease down it. So now we kind of have our light crease lines though. That looks good. We will put that back on there. Always nervous doing this, even though I've done it, you know, 30 or so times. Um, and then you get it all the way across and you can see, yep, this, this art break right here lines up nicely. So what I generally do then is pick it up. Um, and a lot of dust jackets, they'll see it actually overlaps quite a bit. And it kind of looks like it overlaps a lot here, but when you start closing it, you don't want to start creasing it up here because it's got a lot of extra room because uh, of the hinge kind of cuts back so you lose all you get gain all that extra space right there so you don't want to just crease it right now you want to just pull it over and kind of let it naturally find that point kind of work it around a little bit I hold it pull it around a little bit take your time and then I'm just going to give it that nice light crease not a full crease just a light light bend in there and you can see that now, yep, goes around nicely. Um, and then I'll pull this again so that, kind of pull the book into it now that it's clamped right there. Pull the book into it so it pulls the spine nice and tight. Everything's looking good. I'm going to open up the book. Let's see, get, to, get all the pages out of here. Get to the end sheet, fold that in, kind of pull it. I, I'm not going to fold it totally yet. I want to stand it up and make sure that everything is lined up nicely. And it is. The logo's wrapped pretty evenly. Uh, it's sitting flat. It's not like cattywampus where one side's, you know, higher than the other or it's sitting on top of the dust jacket. You want it sitting on the end boards of the, of the thing. So now, now that it's there, it's looking good. It's pretty tight. Then I'm gonna go along here and just do a little bit of a light crease again, not a full crease. It's nice, I'll do this side again on the back. Run up, 
I'm gonna give it a nice crease along here. Again, not a full crease. We're just doing a very light crease along. Um, then you can, if you want, take it off. I rolled these up so they kind of, I was stored them rolled up, so they kind of want to roll back. I try and let them lay flat for a while before I go and do this so that, you know, it's not too curved on everything. So then I'm just going to kind of go along here and give it a little bit more. I'm not full pressing or anything like that. I'm just doing a nice light crease and it's pretty much along the artwork. Um, there's usually an overlap of artwork that wraps around these these crease lines uh, on any Omni, they're not always, they're not usually just absolutely perfect. I'm gonna go along here, do this, and then I'll do, rotate it around, do this side, make sure we are all good. All right, and now you can see why I want to have a clean work surface because this thing's just going all over the place. A little bit nicer with glossy books uh, or glossy dust jackets because they can wipe off a little bit easier, but with these matte ones, they tend to pick up scuffs and dirt a little bit more. So uh, I'm a little bit more careful with them than you really need to be, especially if you have a gloss dust jacket. So. That is it, basically. There's your spine, it's looking pretty good. Um, here's the front cover, looks nice. Back, looks nice. Open it up, looks pretty good. And lines like right on there, so that's awesome. Uh, this one, lines looking good too. Art stops basically right at the edge. A Little bit of a wraparound, but that's no problem and it sits nice and even at the top and at the bottom it sits nice and even too which is kind of the the main thing so you don't want the dust track to be like warping at the bottom or anything when the book's sitting on your shelf but that that's basically it all right so it's actually pretty simple it's straightforward it's a little uh nerve-wracking doing it your first couple times especially because you probably had to pay a decent amount of money for these dust jackets on top of the books that you had to buy too. And what's really frustrating is if you're trying to fix a mistake that was made by one of the publishers when they made this, so it matches the other ones, not even just for fun, like some of the ones I have. Uh, War of Kings trilogy, I have uh, a, f a, a stupid one that we made and I scribbled it out and we put Groot of Kings and everything's just uh, baby Groot because uh, when we did that, it was about the time that Baby Groot came out in Guardians of the Galaxy too. So we do some fun things, but it's nerve wracking when you do it. Uh, but just take your time. Don't make, you know, measure twice, cut once is the carpenter's rule. So, you know, line up twice, fold once, not even fold completely. That's kind of the Omnibuddy rule. So hope that helped you uh, make sure to share this video with others that you know that are in the custom dust jacket community who are just getting into it and may not know uh, but again hope that helped remember to like subscribe hit the bell for notifications do all those things but comment what's your favorite dust jacket uh, what what uh what's your least favorite dust jacket that you have that you want to fix so let's talk about those but uh that's it take care stay safe